Today I'll be teaching you all how to fully utilize the Photography Pro app on your Xperia smartphones in order to capture beautiful photographs every single time. If you already own an Xperia smartphone or thinking about purchasing one and you're interested in using its camera to its full capabilities, this video is for you. Okay, so YouTube says that 70% of you who are watching my videos aren't subscribed. So most of you who are watching this video right now don't know me, so here I will display some photographs I've taken with the Xperia 1 Mark III as well as the Pro Eye, just so you can decide whether or not you want a similar result from your Xperia smartphones and to keep watching this video. So the Xperia smartphones have been picking up some heat over the past few months to a year. And so today I wanted to share my knowledge on the Photography Pro app so that it may help you capture better photographs. All right, let's get started. So what is Photography Pro anyways? Photography Pro or Photo Pro in short is an app created by Sony which fully imitates their alpha cameras. This is why the app interface look like an actual camera and the app allows you to fully control the shutter speed and ISO as well as the white balance and much more from their side menu. And now the Pro Eye has the capability to change aperture from f2 to f4. The Pro app also has the basic mode for beginners just like a camera app on a typical smartphone auto mode, program mode, and shutter priority mode on top of the manual mode. As for the focus, you can switch between single shot autofocus, continuous autofocus, and of course manual focus. And the focus range is also changeable from wide to center. You also get the face eye autofocus and real time eye tracking ability to shoot raw, raw and JPEG simultaneously or just JPEG, as well as all the other settings like flash, HDR, and burst mode at 20 frames per second endlessly. Now let's talk about when and where it's useful to use the Photo Pro app. On a regular smartphone or the basic mode for the Xperia, the phone itself is deciding what the shutter speed is and the ISO should be set at, depending on the environment you're in. Not only can you not control the ISO and the shutter, but the settings won't be displayed. This can cause some disappointment, especially when going home to view them on a larger screen. When you're say in a dark environment, the phone will bump up the ISO significantly to compensate for the low light environment you're in. Oftentimes the shutter speed could be slower or it's too slow, but the phone is deciding everything for you so you cannot do much but to take the photo with the provided settings. So these moments and places that are tricky to shoot, the Photo Pro app will allow you to make the call on what settings the photo should be taken with, allowing for a much better result. It is also useful when shooting in dark and bright locations or when you purposely want to make the subject darker for that silhouette look. It simply allows you to be more creative. But there's one thing that not many are talking about and that is for the low light photographs. If you're not planning to edit the photos in post, it's oftentimes better to use the auto mode to shoot dark environments. This is simply because the noise reduction within the Xperia is advanced so it will clean up the noise for you. Okay, so why use the Photo Pro? The Photo Pro app allows for a much interactive and intuitive experience, much like an actual camera. This is why I personally use it and many others are attracted by it. It's simply fun to shoot with and it becomes more than a phone which you pull out whenever you need to take some quick photos with your family and friends. I never took phone photography seriously or even captured anything decent until this phone because now with the Photo Pro app, I can shoot with my preferred settings like I would with my main alpha camera. This would not be possible through the basic photo app. For instance, I purposely slowed down the shutter speed and panned to get this panning photo of a cab here in Tokyo. And I took a photo in low light environment with burst mode and slow shutter speed in order to keep my ISO down for a clean, noise-free photo. 
Until this day, some of my favorite photographs are taken with this phone using the Photo Pro app, and I'm still amazed by the quality. Now let me show you how to use the app. From the basic mode, you can switch to your preferred mode. So when you go ahead and switch over to the manual mode, you'll see that the interface changes and you're now in the Photo Pro app. The left side menu allows you to change the file format, drive mode, focus, and more, which you can also control from the bottom right side of the app. Then you have the display button right below. This is helpful as it shows you if your composition is straight or tilted. When the bar is green, it's straight, and when it's orange, it's tilted. The histogram will also appear to the bottom right corner, which is helpful when exposing a scene correctly. In a nutshell, for most photos, you want the spikes to be in center, not too far off to either side. For the Xperia Pro I, you will see an aperture control below it, and just underneath is the lenses where you can switch between your focal length. The bottom gray bar is your current settings, which can be controlled on the right side of the screen. The top is the shutter speed, followed by the autofocus toggle, and then you have the 12 changeable settings. Everything except for the camera exposure, which is grayed out, is changeable, but we'll get to that in a moment. Starting from the top left corner, you have the drive mode, which allows you to change from single shooting, continuous high at 20 frames per second and low at 10 frames per second, as well as the timer. The drive mode is useful for capturing in the moment shots, as well as fast moving subjects. You then have the focus mode, single shot autofocus, continuous autofocus, and manual focus. Here I usually leave it to continuous autofocus as you can tap the screen when you need to focus on a specific area within the frame and even track a moving subject in real time. Then the focus area, ISO and metering. The focus area is best to keep it in wide for the most part as the tap to focus again on the Xperia is responsive and accurate. The native ISO is 100, so it's best to keep it at around 100 if possible, although I have gone up to 1600 ISO on the Xperia 1 Mark III, and it's quite impressive. Metering can be changed if needed, which I never mess with. And then from the second row, we have the flash. We know what that is. White balance, which is very handy as it comes with all essential settings plus three custom settings, which you can configure to your liking. When you feel like the colors or the tones of the photos are off, it means that the white balance is off. So usually by selecting the white balance options or creating a custom white balance to your environment, you can significantly improve and fix this issue. But for the most part, the auto white balance has been accurate 99.9% .9 of the time. Then you have the face eye autofocus option, which is great for tracking moving subjects from people to even animals. File format, which you can switch between JPEG and RAW, as well as shoot both simultaneously. You can also change the aspect ratio, although I find this setting useless as it's essentially a crop from your 4x3 12 megapixel aspect ratio, so it's best to always keep this setting at 4x3. Lastly, we have the HDR option, which helps with dynamic range, so you'd want to keep that on. Now, let me show you what the other mode is useful for. So first, we have the program auto. So the camera exposure settings uh, we had no control over previously, uh, over in the manual mode is now controllable from this mode. The program auto basically allows you to shoot everything in a set exposure. The bar indicates the exposure, so the plus is overexposed and the minus is underexposed. Whatever you set it as, the phone will change the settings to compensate in order to keep your desired exposure. 
This mode is helpful when you need to shoot everything with a set exact exposure, such as a panorama shot, which you'd want to stitch in post later on, or when you can't tell if you're shooting over or underexposed in manual mode. Although if you can't tell how it's exposing, using the histogram can be helpful as well. Then we have this shutter priority, which helps you to lock the shutter speed and the phone will automatically change the other settings to keep your shutter speed on lock. If you're shooting a subject which you know for a fact that a specific shutter speed is required, you can use this setting to lock the shutter speed and not worry about changing the setting every time you move or when the lighting changes. It's always important to have the appropriate shutter speed for the best results, as even a micro shake that you are not even aware of can result in an unsharp photograph. And the memory recall, which basically allows you to save default camera settings. Now here are some tips to help you when you're out taking photographs. First is the shutter speed. You always want to prioritize the shutter speed over anything else and adjust it to your environment. Most cases when people take phone photographs and it looks as if it's not sharp, it's oftentimes because the shutter speed is not high enough for that subject they're shooting. This is a common issue when shooting in the basic mode or the regular camera app. A rule of thumb is to keep the shutter speed at the same or double the focal length if possible. So on a 24 millimeter lens, you will want to go no lower than a one over 25 and ideally a one over 50. On a 50 millimeter lens, you will want to stick to a one over 50 or if possible, a one over 100. Of course, it all depends on the subject and the environment you're in, but this is a great rule to follow if you ever get lost. And then second is burst mode for low light. So a technique I use to capture noise-free photographs in dark environments is a ridiculously low shutter speed. And I know I just said a rule of thumb is to keep the shutter to at least the same as your focal length, but I allow myself to break this rule this one time. The slower the shutter, the more light comes in, which eliminates you having to bump up the ISO, resulting in a clean, noise-free photograph, especially in dark places. But this causes camera shake without a tripod. So what I do is I shoot burst mode and use whatever I can, such as a wall or floor or even my own knee to stabilize it as much as possible. After you burst shoot, you will find that some of the photos are sharp. This is because out of the however long you burst shot for, there is often a split moment when the camera is completely still when taking the photo. Of course, the slower the shutter you attempt to shoot it in, the harder it gets. Also, there's usually a sweet spot for how slow you can shoot it in, and you just have to find that yourself. Lastly, lighting. You know they say we see light and not the objects, and without light, we can't see. It goes to show how important light is and how it shapes our perception. This is the same with photography. Good lighting equals good photograph. I won't go too deep into lighting as this video is not a photography tutorial, but the key is to shoot when the light is good. This is very subjective, but softer light usually works wonders like sunrise or sunset and make sure to have contrast within whatever you're shooting. Avoid shooting when there is little to no light, such as a super shaded location. Okay, so that sums it all up. If you watched it this far, thank you so much. And I hope you've learned just everything you need to in order to capture the best photos possible on your Xperia smartphones. If you still don't own an Xperia smartphone and you're contemplating on getting one, I think this phone is for people who are looking for an enjoyable secondary camera on top of all the high-end capabilities for smartphones. And despite the Xperia Pro i and One Mark III being a pro-targeted smartphone, I believe it's also perfect for those who want to try out photography or videography, but is hesitant to invest in an expensive camera and a bunch of lenses. The Photo Pro app will help pro users 
shoot on their smartphones with an intention to create. And for beginners, this will allow you to experience what it will be like to shoot on an actual dedicated camera and try out photography before fully committing to a full frame camera. Go check out one of my vlogs here uh, to see how I use it in my workflow. And if you have any questions, please leave it in the comments below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. But like always, stay safe, stay curious, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.